Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning's message is, as uh, Julie, our principal, mentioned just a few moments ago, today's gospel lesson, special emphasis on these words from Luke's account of the gospel, the 12th chapter. Once again, these words read, Do you think that I have come to give peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. For from now on, in one house, there will be five divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. This is our text, dear family and friends, in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now. I'm not sure what you were thinking or what you felt when Julie, our principal, read today's gospel lesson. But I have to tell you, this section of scripture, it's, it's pretty brutal. And one of the thoughts when reading this on Thursday night uh, that came to my mind was, boy, after reading this, it's hard to say this is the gospel of the Lord. Because in, in many ways, this section of Scripture, it's, it's really kind of shocking. Because here we are told that families are going to be divided among themselves. And that's pretty confusing. Because as we look at Jesus and his ministry, we see that he was not one who came really to serve as a homewrecker. And besides that... Doesn't the fourth commandment say, honor your father and mother that it may be well with you and may live long on the face of the earth? And, and Luther's explanation, he even goes so far to say that we are to serve and obey, to love and to cherish our parents. Thinking about Jesus in his life, he, he did that, didn't he? he? He did that perfectly. This just doesn't seem to make all that much sense. And then we could go even further and think to Mark chapter 7 when Jesus, he, he's kind of scolding the, the Pharisees and rebuking them when instead of taking care of their parents, they found a way to be able to dedicate their offerings or their, their money to the, to the Lord, but then at the same time somehow put this plan together where they keep it for themselves. And on top of that, how many times did we not hear Jesus say that we are to love our neighbor as ourselves, and who's a closer neighbor than our very families, right? And there was also that time when someone came up to Jesus and said, uh, your family's looking for you, and then Jesus says, whoever does the will of my father is my brother, is my sister, is my mother. All this is just, just kind of kind of confusing. But I guess, on the other hand, in all reality, if we think this thing through, it is true that there are things in the gospel and faith in Jesus that do create divisions. There are things in faith and the gospel of Jesus that also, on the other hand, unite as well. And I'm convinced that, that all of this is because that Jesus is creating a new reality in which we now live, a new reality that doesn't really coexist all that well with the old reality, because in this new reality, families can and do indeed become divided among themselves. Now, in hearing these words, there are some who, who become uh, a little bothered, or they're a little bothered by these words. And, and, and some see these words as being a little bit outrageous because uh, it kind of cuts against the grain with that whole thought that, that they believe that Jesus came to really be a nice guy while he was here on earth. We need to understand that Jesus didn't come to be a nice guy. Jesus came to be our Savior. And we need to realize that this battle in which we are involved against sin, that it is not nice. In all reality, this battle against sin, it's deadly. And Jesus, he didn't come to bring peace on earth to, and, and to have a nice and easy life for all of us, to pat us on the back, say, good job, keep on doing what you're doing, everything's going great. No, he came to show us the seriousness of our sin. 
and how sin oftentimes and does indeed separate us from God and his life and his desires for our lives. And, and in the end, ultimately, sin also, it also kills us, doesn't it? But then yet, to provide hope, he, he gives us peace with God through the forgiveness of those sins. And so what did Jesus do? He went to the cross to be baptized with the fire of God's wrath against sin, uh, to experience the wrath and punishment that you and I deserve because of our sins, so that we then might be baptized with the waters of his forgiveness, which then extinguishes the guilt of our sin and quenches the very fires of hell itself and, and, and ultimately gives us everlasting life. This new life in Jesus is the new reality by which we live our lives at this time. And the truth is, in all reality, this new reality is going to conflict with the old reality that is found in our sinful world. It's a conflict that we feel among ourselves as we battle against sin in our own hearts and in our own lives and deal with that daily all the time. And it's a conflict that, that we have with the old wisdom, the old values, the old ways of this world in which we live and, and with all those people who follow those old sinful ways. It's a conflict that in all reality very easily can even reach into and divide families. And that's sad. Because that's not what God has in mind. That is not what God wants for family. He gave us our families to be a blessing to us instead. And divisions like this, while, while they happen, they don't really need to be. Because here's the thing. If the gospel and faith in Jesus divides, it's important that we hold on to realize and cling to the fact that even more so than that, that the gospel and faith in Jesus also unites. And it's kind of awesome when we look at the big picture that, that the gospel and faith in Jesus unites different cultures and different languages and different ages and different abilities and different gifts and different uh, times and different places all together. The word of God's great love unites us so that we then are able to stand side by side, shoulder to shoulder, uh, and, and we are able to be there with each other, husbands and wives, parents and children and, and neighbor, neighbors and friends and coworkers. And, and so much more together where we can say united, yes, Lord, I am a sinner. I confess my sins. I am no better than anyone else. I am not above anyone else. We are all the same needing forgiveness in Christ Jesus. Jesus, who, who raised us from the death of sin to a new life and to a new reality where we're in it together in Jesus. For as we're all joined together in Jesus and his forgiveness, so that Jesus then joins all of us together in a new life, into a new family, the family of God. And so, the Son of God was separated from the Father, forsaken by the mystery of the cross. And, and could we not say that, that the divine family was also in a sense also divided so that it might be taken, so that we might be taken into the family of God and united with him through Jesus, through his resurrection, and through that forgiveness that he won for us through that sacrifice on the cross and the gift of faith. This was the joy that was set before him as he endured the cross, scorning its shame so that he would be seated at the right hand of the throne of God, as we are told by that writer of Hebrews. You, you see, Jesus willingly endured that shame for you and for me because his commitment to bring about unity was that important. What an amazing, wonderful family that Jesus has created and made for you and me to be a part of as well. And I'm not just talking about this group of people who are gathered here together on this day at this time, but I'm also talking about all those people, millions of millions of people who have gone before us, like those people who are listed in, in Hebrews chapter 11 that Julie read just a few moments ago about Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, uh, Joshua, Rahab, Gideon, Samson, David, Samuel, and so many others. What a great cloud of witnesses to, uh, to the life of forgiveness that is found in Jesus. In his faithfulness, we can see the 
that their lives were not easy. No, far from it. They all enjoyed troubles and hardships and persecutions and, and homelessness and death and, and, and so much more. But even though they were divided from their families and friends and, and sometimes the world in which they lived, they could not be divided or separated from Christ. Not because they were so great, but because Christ is so great because he gave them uh, the gift of faith that they have, and he keeps them in their faith, because he, he helped them uh, through thick and th held on to them through thick and thin, and his forgiveness and life is greater than, than all these burdens that they faced. And the same thing can be said for each and every one of you. You also are a part of that great cloud of witnesses, that's why our theme for, us, for this past year was let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. We need to remain focused on him as we experience all these challenges and difficulties and hardships in our lives. That then will enable us to forge ahead and make our way through them. Because it's true, and you know it as well as I do, that hardships and difficulties and divisions come. That's what happens when we live in a world that is filled with sin. But the question is, or the key really is, how do we, how do we interpret these signs? How do we interpret these difficulties that we are wrestling with? You see, just following today's gospel lesson, Jesus said the following. He said, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you say, at once a shower is coming. Well, that happened just a little bit ago, didn't it? And so it happens, Jesus tells us. And when you see a south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat. Jesus said it happens. So in other words, he's telling us that hostilities and divisions, they're going to come. Some of those things are, are, are right here, right now, at this very moment. But the question is, what do they mean? I guess in the end, we can say it's simply that, that they mean that, that the word of God is working not with the goal of dividing families, but of dividing us from our sin and creating a new family, the family of God, of separating us from this world and uniting us to Christ. It's not always going to be easy. It's always going to be good. And that's what we need to hang on to. And finally, in Jeremiah 23, Jeremiah said that the word of God is like a hammer that breaks rocks into pieces. Thanks be to God when our hard, sinful, stony hearts are smashed and that new hearts of faith replace that hard, stony heart. Thanks be to God that he loves us enough to do that for us. And thanks be to God that, that those who are divided from us right now, even as we speak, that our Savior is at work in them and through them to bring them to himself and to raise them into a new life as well. So I would say, thanks be to God. In his name, amen. And now, may the peace of God, which far surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting. Amen.